What's up everyone? I am Magicide. Welcome back to our Geek Fest here playing Crusader Kings 2 as Lombard Salerno. It's been uh, several years since we last left off. If you take a look here, we're just about to hit 1450, baby. Where it means we're just slightly more... Well, actually slightly less. I mean, technically. I mean, we've got about four years left in the game. And uh, I just really wanted to kind of clue you guys in and what happened. Let's uh, take a little gander around the map. Yeah, I've done some damage to the world here. It's pretty fantastic. The Mongols never showed up. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the dude ended up dying or what ended up happening, but he never showed up. I mean, I guess that was to our benefit. Um, something I should probably mention is, is that like right after, literally the moment I unpaused after the previous episode, I got the and stay out achievement. I took enough land away from the Aztecs that they were completely extinguished. There was no more... There was no Aztec Empire anymore. And they broke up into small little duchies and OPMs and whatnot. So that was pretty fantastic. The other thing is, is that, uh, well, you know, papal claims are a good thing. The last crusade that I think that you guys saw, I think was against the Seljuks for Kiva up here. And then the... Uh, last crusade that I called was actually for Punjab and even though I had the most war score I think it's because the Pope hated us he ended up giving it off to uh, these guys for whatever reason whatever but these guys are Catholic so I'm kind of happy with that I was thinking about doing maybe somewhere over here in India but uh, I thought this would probably be the best and uh, yeah so this is where we're at we've got a couple more years Emperor Cheese is 51 years old and uh, he's possessed, one-legged. I've got a whole bunch of empire titles that I could form. I do have to say that I uh, ended up... This is a, a learning thing for anybody out here, anybody out there watching that doesn't know this. If you have the option to usurp a, say, a kingdom or a empire, especially an empire title, don't do it. Unless, of course, it's the empire title that you're actually really wanting to... Um, Want, want, wanting to actually have, wanting to acquire. Because I ended up usurping the Byzantine Empire from whatever random horde up here that owned it. It was the actual title. And then when I actually had it, unfortunately, they were still stuck on agnatic, cognatic, gavel kind. And I had a hair pull moment there for at least a good like 15 years in the game of finishing up my wars, making sure that my ruler here, Emperor Cheese, ended up, uh, was ruling for 10 years, and then I had to make sure that all, none of my vassals were fighting, and then pretty soon I had to start, like, paying a bunch of people off and transferring, like, sub-vassals and things to keep them happy in order to make sure that I got the, the, um, agnetic cognetic primogenitor. It was kind of risky, man. That would, have been, that would have really sucked because the Empire or the Byzantine Empire would have included a whole bunch of land over here that I didn't want to have to reconquer. That would have sucked balls. But I took care of that. So I uh, had a snafu moment. So if you guys have the option of usurping a Empire title that is not like an Empire title that you're already gunning for, don't do it. Don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a big trap. But we took care of that. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to, uh, like, kind of just play on my own and finish up the rest of our campaign, first of all, is that, like, you know, we're so big, and since I'm doing, like, Viceroy Kings and Queens, um, you know, I've got to sit there and juggle vassals. So every time one of them dies, i got to sit there and give uh, the vice Viceroyal title to somebody else, and then i got to start transferring vassals. And it's a big, big, huge pain in the ass, and that really slowed me down. And I'm glad that, you know, I just kind of did it on my own. Besides, we already did the major achievements that I was kind of going for. I'm thinking when we do this in EU4, I'm going to actually try to go for a world conquest type of thing. I've never done one before, and I think it's about time that I do so. So anyways, when I last left off, I mean, when I saved the game and uh, before I started recording, I left myself off feasting. So let's get right into it. I think I'm going to just try to coast into the last couple years we have. There's really nobody else I really want to attack. I mean, we could attack the Seljuks. Um, if we look at the Fatimids. Whenever I get the option to, that is. 
Okay, so the Fatimids down here, I already have a truce with them, and then uh, Abyssinia down here, I've got a truce with them. Uh, if you notice that the Yahids ended up controlling a lot of this, they ended up splitting. They split up into a whole bunch of different OPMs and, like, you know, independent duchies and whatnot. And I attacked all of the independent nations. And then they, uh, some of the, the, the bigger group ended up turning into the Husseins, which I just completely wiped off the face of the earth. Their last little area was down here, and I took them out not that long ago. And then we have these guys here, um, who are Catholic and Egyptian, <laughs> Egyptian Catholics. And for some reason, whatever they're calling themselves, well, they called themselves Scotland before. I don't know how or why, but whatever, you know, I'll take it. This map, you know, I really want to attack the HRE, but I'm kind of leaving that up to EU4. So it looks like the vice royalty of Aragon is no longer considered the du jour part of the Empire of Hispania. So that's... Oh, I can still form the Empire of Hispania. I don't like... Alright, so that's another thing I probably should mention whenever I play this game. And, uh, you know, you get up to that point where you just start conquering the world. I only like to have one Empire title. And the simple reason is, is that if you have the access to form these other Empire titles, I would say don't do it because otherwise your other viceroy vassals are going to start lusting after those titles, and I definitely don't want that. Ever. Um, we're going to lie to her face. That's right, we cheated on our wife a few times. Speaking of which, I think our wife is getting pretty old, right? Oh, she's only 35, never mind. Okay, some people are insulting me. All right, let's make sure that I actually didn't imprison them. I've got a huge number of prisoners here. Uh, let's separate my title. Let's just let him go. Actually, who? Okay, so we're gonna let this guy go. We're gonna let them both go. So we can get a little bit of the plus three opinion boost. Then the previous episode two that I forgot to mention is uh, our ruler, our monarch at the time, he had two sons. And um, the Fatimids thought they were going to be sneaky. They actually invited both of my sons to their court and gave them lands down here. And both of my sons ended up converting over to Shiite. And culture flipped to Somali. That sucked. My firstborn son, uh, somebody was plotting to kill him and was successful. The second son, yeah, I got rid of him real quick too. And then their kids, I had a quickly plot to kill them, which I was successful for, and then I had a legitimized genius bastard that continued my bloodline. That was another one of those moments where I'm just like, Jesus, man, this game. So I'm not planning on any wars here. My vassals have definitely done some damage. We also had the, the Kingdom of Hungary and the Kingdom of Bavaria that I had, um, uh, du jour claims on, or excuse me, I could push at least some vassals claims on, which I did. So Hungary and Bavaria are actually kings and queens, not viceroys. I would like to take out the last province in B uh, Bosnia here, but we have a truce with them until the end of the game. So if we could, we would. I would lose all that prestige just to do it, but we also have like three different adventurers that are I'm gonna attack us at some point, and I'm trying to kill one of them, even though, <laughs> I mean, for some reason, this is just not going through because he's uh, he's secluding himself away, which is probably gonna pop. When is that gonna pop, by the way? Uh, July of 1450. Okay, so later this year, a few months. I was really just hoping to coast into victory and the last portion of our campaign here. But I guess it's not going to be... We're going to have to take care of some adventurers. As a matter of fact, at 1450, 1451. So I'm going to have two that pop this year. See if... Hey, Pope man, want to give me money? No? Okay. I already asked him for a whole bunch of money. I did have an, another... Actually, it was that, that legitimized bastard genius that I was talking about before. Uh, I ended up getting the immortal event chain again. And I saved up a whole bunch of money for it. And there was the one event where you go into the woods to go fasting. I didn't eat any food. And then my guy walked off a cliff and died. It was pretty hilarious. 
It's the words of the wise. Be wary of the uh, immortal event chain. I'm still a little salty, the original one that we had. I wish I would have actually just went into debt to get it, because I'm pretty sure we'd have, we would have been successful. Man, if only this guy, this one adventurer right here, was not in seclusion. We'd be alright. Oh, the other thing I probably should take a look at is... Um, so I managed to pretty much max out all of the buildings in my realm where the technology has not completely spread to. Also, if we take a look at our technology tab... Well, that's pretty handy dandy. Uh, I think we should probably do that. Um, let's do... Say, town infrastructure. There we go. Go at the uh, the technology pretty hardcore. As a matter of fact, if we take our spy master, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're in the lead. There was one province over here that had a technological lead on us, but we beat them out. So there's that. We're gonna have our spy master actually just come back and chill in Salerno, guard against any would-be threats against us. Also, um, did manage to actually upgrade our hospital all the way. That was the other thing I did. Okay, we have this guy here who wants to be my new chancellor. Um, yeah, sure, dude. Okay, so I think I was having you so dissent in the HRE. Caused some damage over there. I just was really reticent about actually attacking the HRE. Um, I guess we'll have a hold of the summer fair. Okay, so I have another asset or another adventurer. I got four adventurers now. Christ, what is this, uh, commander? Okay. I was, you know, I was actually saying to myself earlier. I was sitting there thinking about it. I was like, man, I haven't really had any adventurer threats the entire game, and it's only been towards this end that I've been starting to get them. So our ruler is going to live, but then when we export over to EU4, he's going to be pretty old. So we're going to take that stability hit right away in EU4. Which I suppose is easier to deal with than, say, having a Regency Council. Because that happened to me in my long, my last long campaign. I died like 15 years before the game end. And then I had this huge, massive revolt. Okay, where is this guy coming? Oh, where is he at? Where is he located? Is my plot still good? Okay, this is the same guy, right? Oh, look. Yep. Okay, where is this fool? Where are you? Um. Okay. So, he can't actually fight me, I guess, because he's in seclusion, right? You are in seclusion. Yes. Okay, so, I guess no adventurer threat. Whatever. Alright, this is something I was actually really hoping to avoid here. We're going to have to unpause, or excuse me, pause. Um, we're going to search my vassals for my religion, my culture. We want gender, any uh, ruler, yes. Uh, separated by rank. And let's take a look at our dukes. Look at all those viceroys. I'm trying to find somebody who has, like, just the two titles. Everybody uh, almost created a bunch of super dukes. I've been uh, requesting, or demanding, Gavelkind with a lot of them when I can and they haven't been like tucked underneath somebody Jesus man these greedy bastards All right no I'm not you man so many so many titles okay there we go uh, you can have Greece see if I didn't do this before man I mean this is what I'd end up spending most of the game doing and we're gonna transfer him all of those people Hoping we're not too far over. Let's see here. Transfer. I think this is the last one. Shit. So we're over a couple more. See, this is what 
I was doing in between this episode and the previous episode was just going through and transferring vassals. Sometimes some of these people, you just can't transfer any more dukes and counts towards them. You can't tuck any more people. So we're, we're like pushing our maximum density here. Come on, damn you. Somebody. No? Okay, I'm gonna check these last two guys. Like, I don't even care at this point. I know I'm gonna lose money for being over my vassal limit, but oh well. Okay, we need a new spy master. Um, so we'll take this man. You can have this. Oh, you know, that was that was something, if you noticed that. Uh, the, the weird name for my whatchamacallum, my honorary titles. I actually to try to get around the uh, agnatic, cognatic, gavel kind, I tried to make the Byzantine Empire my primary title, and that totally worked, but the problem with it was is that if you play as the Byzantines, only the children that are born in the purple are going to be the ones that inherit that title, your the Byzantine Empire title, and since I already had, like, I think, like, three or four sons, how many sons do I have now? I had, um... Uh, I think I had four sons. Okay, you weren't born in the purple. You were, okay. So I had I have four sons here, and because the empire of the Iron Crown is agnetic, cognetic, primogenitor, all of my titles were gonna be split on that side. So I ended up having to revert it back over to the Iron Crown Empire before I was able to start trying to finagle my vassals. Okay, so what do we got here? God damn it, Salerno just became Italian. Motherfucker. Okay, we want to assign you a guardian. We want somebody like this man here. Well, that sucks. Man. You'd think that, like, since I've been dominating the world with Lombard culture, that there would be no more Italian. If we take a look at, uh, since we're already zoomed out, look at that, Catholicism is pretty... Pretty strong. We bounce back, baby. So I think this guy... Okay, so he's out of his... thing. So let's actually cancel that. What about my other adventure threats? Can I try to plot to kill these guys? Okay, you've got a low chance. Low chance. Looks like... Oh, maybe I can do him. Oh yeah, faux show. Got a whole bunch of people here. So much for a low impact end of our game. <laughs> I mean, I already had some of these adventurer threats beforehand. I'm gonna get as many people as I can. I mean, these guys are, are pretty ridiculous with their plot power. Alright, let's send you a gift, and then we'll do this woman down here. Alright, there we go. So where is this guy located? Where are you? You're way over here somewhere. Okay, so let's see here. I've got let's see here, Ireland and whoever these guys are. Who are you? The Bavarian Revolt? Okay, you're not going to do me any good. Um... Well, shit balls. So, let's actually take a look at my military. Um, you know what? Just give me all of your troops. I don't care. I'm just going to keep them over there. I'll keep them raised. Let's see here. Okay, I've got a big stack over there. Make sure nobody's down here. Is it Molly's... Come on, man. We're fighting each other. Okay. Some stacks over here. We got some ships over here. Pick you guys up. Let's say well, down here in Orbitello. I'm just gonna keep my armies over here because that's where most of these adventure threats are gonna come from. 
almost split in half. Um, I suppose I could probably also raise Ireland's troops. And we can use these guys to come up here and get rid of these raiders. You know what? You guys might as well just come here. Oh shit. One of my one of my plots is about to go through. I'm gonna take some attrition here, which is quite unfortunate. Palermo just became Lombard. Got another dangerous faction. All right, well, you know what? I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna wait till my one plot is finished, and then we're gonna take care of this guy. Hadn't had to deal with too many dangerous factions for a while. Awesome. So we did manage to kill him. One of our adventurers. We're gonna plot to kill this fool. Oh, look at that. His spy master hates him. It's like a guaranteed success right there. Let's uh, send you a gift since you're just a random courtier. And how about this man? Hunt? Why, you're expensive. Okay. We're just gonna leave it as is. We're gonna have plenty of plot power as is. Uh, you guys can do. Oh. I guess we sail them over here, put them in two different pieces. Okay, you guys are ready to rock and roll here, so why don't you guys do the same. And we're just waiting for the ships to arrive over here. I'm going to leave them raised. I'm just going to keep them over here to deal with all these adventures. Alright, you guys, why don't you guys split in half. I'm going to take one group to come right over here. Let's see here. Okay, and then the other group have you guys go south and then do the same thing. Okay. And then these ships can get stood down. So I know we're going to get attritioned a little bit on the way. Well, we managed to kill him. But we got another another threat here. God damn it. What is the matter with you people? Okay, let's see here. Awful vassals. Let's see here. Any more more people? Here we go, a random courtier. Excellent. Let's try to get this plot power as high as possible. Yeah, there's another person. Yeah, I don't mean, mind paying for this. We got the money. All right. Oh, <laughs> the faction automatically dissipated. <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to try to kill her anyways. Just for thinking about it. Also, let's actually pause. I got a guy that's an organizer. Um, maybe I shouldn't have him. Um, you know what? Let's send him a little bit of money so he stops hating us. Actually, you're the... God damn it, the inspiring leader. Yes. And this man. And now uh, we'll put you on the side. And then I think I should still have an organizer somewhere. Got this man here, Ratchus. And then you. I like organizers because they increase your movement speed of your armies. So when you need to get to somewhere a little bit quicker, always put those guys in charge. Okay. Another stack of troops here. Okay, so 
Syracuse. Just trying to ma max out whatever buildings I can. Gurgenti. Okay. So we're just waiting on actual technology spread. Okay, here's the sec here's the other one. Where are you guys located? Okay. okay. That's what I figured. They're all going to be coming from up here because they all look like they're like the Tengri horde kind of guys. So I have a new granddaughter here. Let's get you married. Let's see here. Is there anybody at the start of this? Um, there we go. I have this attractive kid. Kind of wondering if these adventurers end up getting exported over. Probably actually recruit that guy. Uh, yeah, let's um, send him some money. Recruit him. And then demand his religious conversion. And then also... What's my plot up? Okay. Anybody else? It's always important to double check on this because sometimes people change their minds and then when titles change hands, obviously the new person in charge might think differently. Might want to join you on your merry little plot. Okay, you guys can come over here as well. God damn it. Alright, so we need to give somebody else a viceroy title. This is what I was talking about. Big pain in the ass, man. You gotta do it so many times. Um, here you go. Maybe Africa. Enjoy. And then, um, let's see here. Let's see if I can transfer any vassals towards your way. Looks like the answer is no. You guys are okay. The game's got to process so much here in the late late game that you have to pause to do anything. You guys are just going to bounce back and forth. So I should still have one adventurer threat. You know, what if I just gave her some money and then we'll have her go piss off and then as far as this adventurer might be able to do it, but he is in seclusion. Which kind of puts a damper on things. Um, I guess we'll pay some more people off, try to get rid of him in the meantime. That Viserine is going to die soon anyways. She's getting pretty up there in age. Which means i got to juggle more vassals. Okay. Send you a gift. Send you a gift. Anybody else? Oh yeah. They're pretty small, but every little bit counts. Maybe we'll kill him while he's in seclusion. Wouldn't that be pretty sweet? All right. Anybody else? Maybe okay, we got a bunch of three percenters. Sure. You guys are cheap. hoping this is enough. I haven't been doing the math. Okay. Okay, so these guys are going to go to Merv. Let's 
this over here. And then the rest of these armies, why don't you guys all come over here? Stables have been built in Trapani and Rome. Let's go have a little look see here. I'm trying to max these guys out before the end of the game. Uh, I think I already did Padua. And then Verona. Okay, you need stables. And then Gurgenta, Syracuse. I think we're pretty much full up. All right. So here's the other adventurer guy. You know what? Why don't you guys why don't you guys come up here? Actually, why don't you guys come up here? <laughs> and speaking of which, I don't think we really need my one Viceroy. My organizer Viceroy. I don't need him anymore. Um, we'll take this guy. And we'll have you lead my troops. Motherfucker. Okay. Let's see here. This is what I was talking about. Big pain in the ass. Okay, you can have Anatolia. Can I give you anybody? One guy. I'll take it. I'm gonna throw some more some more troops in my way. Looks like we can usurp this duchy here. Awesome. So what we'll do is we'll go back into our character finder. Let's look for our count this time. Alright. There we go. Give you the duchy. There you go, sir. Enjoy. That actually... <laughs> it, made, it made his opinion of us, like, drop for whatever reason. You bastard. Okay. You need to get married. Okay, let's see here. Is there anybody worth it? Okay, we got a strong girl here. Sure. When you guys come up here and smack that army. Alright, so you want to become my new marshal? Um, sure, dude. I'm going to have you... Research us some military tech, and we need to replace you as a commander. Very well. Alright, well, these guys are coming down this way. So you guys can come there. You guys also can come over here. Take a look at our plot here. Is there anybody else? Might have changed their mind. Nope. Okay. There, and there's one of them. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Sometimes if you banish these guys, you can get a whole bunch of money. And that's what we're gonna do. Okay, you guys are actually heading back to my realm. The one downside to actually banishing the adventurers is, is that there's a good chance that they're gonna turn back around and try to hit you up again. There's always the possibility of that. Alright, you know what? I'm not going to have you guys raid my lands anymore. I'm going to smash you in the face. No! God damn you. You know what? We're going to actually go through 
my own vassals here. I don't really need anybody that's content at the moment. I don't care. Um, you're 35. I want somebody young. Okay, 35, 26. Okay. Congratulations, you can become the new Viserine of Portugal. And can I transfer anybody over to you? I cannot. Alright, so we're going to be over. Don't care. For the moment. Not making as much money as we could be. You know what? Where is this? There's the other stack right there. Okay, you guys need to hurry up. Actually, where is my organizer at? Um, there he is. That's what I was kind of afraid of with that with that group. Is that they're going to split up like that. Fourteen fifty-two, baby. Such a small amount of time left. So, is he a part of this army over here? He's a part of that group. I think he's probably going to try to get in those ships. Got a year and a half left until the end of the game. You want to know something? I'm going to actually split you guys up so you guys don't take attrition here. Awesome. Verona just culture flip to uh, Lombard once again. It's been kind of a rubber, rubber band effect with between uh, Lombard and Italian cultures. Okay, you guys are going over here now. You guys are sitting here. Kind of wondering if I'm going to have enough war score here from destroying this group. Um, I'm going to flatly deny it. Yeah, I have been sleeping for, with your wifey. He wants to challenge me. He's got 26 Marshall. I've got 19 Marshall. No, <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to kill myself here. I'm surprised that didn't make me craven. Here, you can have this uh, this dwarf child. Mad Modigan, wait! So close. Almost done. So we managed to get rid of those nasty raiders. And this group is dead. Split you guys up. And then let's actually put some of you guys here on the flanks. Assuming, of course, they don't leave. Because when you're vassals, when you do it to your, your vassals and they don't like you, always a good chance that they, uh, they might just abandon their post. Especially right before a battle. I have to keep checking this. Okay, there, there's our, our other group. <laughs> and our plot's going to go through. Okay. So it fired off right before a lot of these people left the group. I don't know if it's actually going to go through. Uh, yeah, let's assemble the mob. Oh, excellent. Okay. So, where is this guy? Way over here. Okay, men. Come back this way. Although, I mean, we did have... Oh, god damn it. My plot failed. So, might as well cancel that. 
Kind of curious if these guys are going to actually head down south this way or if they're going to go west. And that's the end of them. That's right, get out of my land, ass. What about if I banished you? 500 gold? Sold. And let's actually hard save. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard save the game at the start of 1453. And then that's what I'm going to use to export over to EU4. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, whenever I finish the campaign and you get the, the end of the game screen showing you how much, uh, how much you beat everybody else, you know, in your, your dynasty's um, prestige score. For whatever reason, I cannot export it, my game, from that screen over to EU4. Like, the game just locks up. CK2 just locks up. It just won't do it. So I have to do it, like, beforehand. Actually, I take that back. We're going to hard save right before 1453. I'm just going to have to pay attention to the time. Hey, where's this guy? Alright, he is coming over this way. Okay, so what we need to do is... Go by total strength. I need a bunch of ships. 96. 51. Oh, Jesus Christ. Come on, man. Where, where the hell are the vassals that we have? You have 83. Come on, one of you guys has like 400 ships. 21. Oh, what the hell? Okay, fine. You know what? Just let's get these ships raised. And. Let's see, where are the rest of them? I have that feeling that a bunch of these ships are down here. One stack is. The other one's over in this direction. Okay. Or worse, they're over here. <laughs> that would suck. So I actually have France over here. France. Um, separate by rank, first of all. And I need France's troops, who has none. Um, who are you guys? You guys are hungry? Okay. How about the Hungarian troops? Let's see here. Where is Hungary? You have 394 troops. You're worthless. Um, we have Scotland. How about Scotland? Did we pass up Scotland? Jesus Christ. You guys are pathetic. Whatever. All right, we got Navarra right here. How about Navarra? Uh, let's see here. Where is Navarra? Jesus. That's terrible. Terrible. No. I don't want my son. I lost a son that way. Big mistake. Okay. You guys get on the ships and sail right on over. See if we can beat them to the punch. Thankfully. Oh. You want to marry my kinswoman? Negative. She must marry matrilinally. How about this dwarf man? And we caught him. And he's leading those that, that stack of troops there. Beautiful. Okay, so we have a daughter here. Let's assign you a guardian. Um, somebody that doesn't really care for us that's Lombard like this man. And we'll hard save. Gotta pay attention to time. Don't want to lose sight of this. 
you guys are going to cross the river. Um, and we also need somebody on the flank here. God damn you. Um, do we have any genius children? Quick, somebody. Come on. There we go. Perfect. You want to marry my niece. Stop. Hold still. Let's get her married matrilineally. How about this uh, attractive man here? Okay, see? That's what I'm talking about. This fucking bastard. Thought he was going to get out skate away from getting into battle. I don't think so, bub. You guys are going to... Oh, we beat him to the punch. Look at that. Nice. I hope I kept, catch him in battle. Fifteen December. Twenty December. All right, let's. Uh, oh no! Oh, oh, heart. Oh, there we go. Booyah, look at that. You see that? I got the survivor achievement. That's what I'm talking about, baby. So we did it. I'm going to hard save here. And I'm pretty sure, actually, it, it's going to auto save on January 4th. And then it's going to go until 1453. I'm going to record it until then. Like we should. Oh, never mind. It just ends in 1453. So, so we caught it right before then. Look at that shit. 208,000 prestige since 1066. It's pretty great. Conquered most of the European territory. Did a lot of damage this game. It's been fun. I look forward to seeing you guys in our holdover campaign when we ex export over to EU4 to Europa Universalis 4 and try to go for that glorious world conquest and I'll see you guys then thank you very much for joining me it's been a it's been a hell of a run we started from some pretty humble beginnings and we are the conquerors faux show anyways I'll see you guys in EU4 it's been a pleasure. I'll see you then. Take care and have a good one.